Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this session, we are going to start our learning assignment 8 where we will implement read items functionality in SPFX client side web part application. So let's look into the steps. What are the steps we are going to follow? So guys, to implement this functionality, we will start our journey with step 1 where we will create the model to hold the list fields data. Once step 1 is done, then we will proceed to the step 2 where we will create a function to do the read operation on list items. At step 3, we will write the code, perform the restful call from SPFX client side web part application. Next, we have a step 4 where we will create div to display the response which is being returned by the SharePoint REST API and we will also build a caller function we will call the read list item function. And at last, we will implement the bind function that will hold the logic for the click events. So, whenever read button gets clicked, it will call the read list item function so let's jump into the visual studio code and start writing the code for all these steps so guys we are into the visual studio code and we are going to perform the step one so for the step one we need to create the model so to create the model i am going to create a file so let's create over here and i will give it a name called i event registration dot Yes, enter and over here I will specify export interface and over here I will write I event registration and within that I will specify the fields name so here I will tell that ID which is of type number this is for the ID item ID it will holds the information for the item ID then I will tell the title this will holds the title value of the title column and it is of type string then we have email this will holds the email information then we have batch this is of type string and then we have level of knowledge and this is of type string so now we have completed our step one so we have created the model now we are going to use this file so now we have completed the step one let's proceed to the step two where we will create a function to read list items so let's do it first we will import this model in our file and over here I will tell that import and over here I will tell I event registration from I event registration. Make sure that you are saving it. So why I have written this line? Because we are going to use this particular model in our upcoming steps. So let's implement the step two. So now I will come over here and I will tell that private underscore get list items and this is of type promise. I will tell promise and that will return our model type of data so i will tell that event registration and it is array because we are looking for all the items from the list so over here make sure that we registration so now we have done the step two so now we have completed the step two now we will proceed to the step three where we will prepare the code to do the rest call and that is going to happen inside the function which we have written at step two so over here we will tell first const we need the url we will tell that site url which is of string and we need to specify the endpoint so as you know that we need to tell this dot context dot page context dot web dot absolute url and here we can append slash underscore api slash web slash lists get by title and here we need to specify the list name and what is our list name it is even registration then we need to tell slash items so now we have done so now we have created the endpoint url now next we need to write return and over here we need to specify this dot context dot sp http client dot get and here we need to tell site url and we need to specify the header configuration sp http client dot configuration dot v1 next we need to tell that dot then into and here we need to grab the response and that response we will return in the form of json response dot json over here we will come and then again we will tell that then and we will specify json and we need to write an anonymous function over here that will return the json value because value holds the actual list data and which is of type of our interface that is promise and what is the name of our interface that means what is the name of our model that is event registration and which is of type array which is coming from the list so now we have completed the step 3 
So in this step, we have created the endpoint URL. This is a SharePoint API endpoint URL from which we are grabbing the all the data from the SharePoint list called event registration. And over here, we are performing the get operation and to perform the get operation, we are passing the endpoint as well as the header configuration. And once it is being successful, then it is sending the response and that response we are converting into the JSON and we are grabbing the JSON value and then we are returning all the data which is of type i event registration and i event registration model holds the title email batch as well as level of knowledge so now let's proceed further so guys now we will perform the step four where we will create a div that will display the response which we have got with the help of step three and along with that we will also create a color function which will basically call this particular function where we are doing the restful call. So let's do it. So I will go up and over here I will introduce another div. First I will introduce over here an HR tag and over here I will introduce div id equal to and I will give it a name that is called list items. Save it. Now we have done with the creation. Now let's proceed further and build a function private read items which is of type void it is not going to return anything and over here we will call our get list item method get list items method so let's do it this dot underscore get list items and over here we will tell that dot then once we get the list items i will take all the list items and then i will process it now here i am going to create html string and now i am going to create a table over here and i will call it like table border is going to be one and width i want to give 100 percent i am going to specify the style also so over here i will tell style style equal to i am going to specify the value border hyphen collapse colon collapse semicolon and now i will close it now next we need to append all the grabbed value which we are getting from the sharepoint list with this html string so how we will do that let's look into it so what i will tell that i'm going to tell list items dot for each because we are getting the array and and fetching the value one by one and making the html string and appending with this particular html string so let's look into that how we will do that i will tell that give me each item and then i will write an anonymous function and over here i will tell html plus equal to back tick and within that i will tell that tr that is for table row now within that i am going to create the columns so let's do it but prior to that make sure that you have the closing tag as well for the tr and within that we will perform all the operations and over here i will mention ad td close and now here we will put dollar to get the dynamic value and within that i am going to specify list item dot title so this will return me the title now grab the email as well so to make it easy i am going to copy and paste it so let's paste it over here and i will tell over here title email batch and over here i will specify level of knowledge i am forgetting id over here let me copy this one and paste it over here and this will holds the id value so now we are done so now next we will come outside of this and we will close the table so we will tell that html plus equal to and over here i will specify table closing tag so once it is being done we will grab the reference of this particular dev element and then we can bind the html which we have created just now so let's look into that how we are going to do this so over here i will come back and we will write something like this we will tell that const list container which is of type element equal to this dot dom element dot query selector and over here i am going to specify the div id which we have specified there so i will tell that hash list item let's look into that what id we have provided just copy it and paste it over here and then put semicolon and now we will associate the inner html where we can bind our html so let's do it i will tell list container dot inner html equal to html and this is the html which we have generated from the response so guys save it we have completed our step four so now let's proceed further now in the step five we are going to bind the functionality with the read button so how we will do that let's look into it so we will come over here 
and we will go to the underscore bind all events and over here we will copy this one and paste it over here in this time i will specify the read button id so what is that let's grab it so it is btn read copy this one we should come over here and specify the read button and then over here we are going to call read items function paste it over here and now we are done with all the steps so now let's proceed for the the solution and let's run the gulp serve so let's do it go inside the terminal new terminal and over here make sure that you are going to save the file so i'm going to save it control s and i will come over here i will tell gulp build enter now it will start building the solution our build is completed now let's write gulp serve minus minus no browser enter our server is started now let's open the hosted workbench now i have opened the hosted workbench and over here i will select our event registration web part and now let's click on read it is not working now try to click on this read registered user info and over here this is working so that means we are having same name for two button so let me fix that and then we will test it again so let me quickly do it we will come over here i will search for button read see so over here the id for this button is btn read and we are having another button which is also of type btn read it should be btn single item read now save this one and now let's build it again gulp build into our build is completed let's write gulp serve minus minus no browser into now server is started let's go again to the hosted workbench and let's refresh it now let's click on read so over here i will click on read now it is working fine in this time read button work and this is what i wanted to demonstrate you in this session so let's wrap our session so guys in this session we have started our journey with the step 1 where we have created the model by using the interface then we have created the read list item and within that we have prepared code to perform the restful call from spfx client side web part application then we have performed a step 4 where we have created a div that we have used to display the response then we have built the caller function called read items which was internally calling the list item function which basically making sharepoint rest api call and at step 5 we have bind read item function with read button i hope you enjoyed the session i am stopping over here see in the next session till then bye bye take care